we've realized how people come into the child's lives and or the children's lives and take away from the parents that duty and responsibility what happens i'm not talking about your environment in your home within yourself you might have quran you might have taught the child allah allah which is beautiful first words look at what the child is saying allah allah etc so beautiful the child hears you read quran and watches you read salah and fulfills it with you because automatically allah has kept within any child the power and the ability of mimicking the child will mimic follow follow you know if you have children may allah bless those without children with children say amen even if you're not married. The reason is that dua would include the marriage first. We are Muslims. You know that. So if there's a young man saying, you don't have children, make dua that I have children. You say, Ameen. He means, let me have a wife first. That's what it means. So it's a two in one dua, mashallah. So we, mashallah, are given this responsibility, but we forget there are other factors. The schools you decide to send your children to, they indoctrinate the child, whether you know or not. The cartoons or the movies or the way you speak, you scream. The child grows up believing it's normal to scream, start screaming. You swear the child grows up believing it's normal to swear. But if that doesn't happen the day the child is exposed to that, it will automatically feel ashamed. Hey, did you hear that uncle? A big swear word, FNB. Some people, for some people, that's a bank. But for others, it's a bad swear word, man. May Allah protect us. And then there's another child saying, what's the big deal? But that's a big swear word. Look at the contrast. You are neighbors, you live next to each other. For one child, it's a big deal to say the F word. And for the other child, they utter it as though it is salt and pepper in their scrambled eggs in the morning. Allah grant us ease. Why? Because that is Allah. Allah has taught us that when you get used to something, you will consider it norm. So be careful what you are exposed to and what you allow your children to be exposed to. Be careful. And that's why we live in an environment where taught, choose a good environment. Shift your home if need be. If that environment is bad, it will be worth it because your children will grow up at least understanding what's good and bad because it's only up to a certain age. Once they clock a certain age, then it takes a little bit longer to get them used to something negative. Say, for example, a youngster started watching porn at the age of 25. For example, may Allah protect all of us. It might take them, they'll feel guilty if they've had a good upbringing. But if they keep on doing it again and again, it becomes a habit. When it becomes a habit, it becomes difficult to remove it. But the guilty feeling initially depicts your good upbringing. And it depicts the fact that you're a believer and you are concerned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it depicts. Because if you're not concerned about Allah, you wouldn't be bothered anything and everything. There is no distinguishing between halal and haram. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu says, when your good deed makes you happy and your bad deed makes you sad and regretful, it's a sign that you're a mu'min and a believer because your bad deed is making you regret. That's what it is.